is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Radio Network. Because that's the bottom line. Because Stone Cold sucks up. And so, goodbye. <laughs> and good night. Bang! Settle! Because I'm better than you, and you know it. Yes, sir! To off the mat with Alex Lowe's and Josh Silverberg. Hello, wrestling fans! Welcome to our repackaged, rebranded, brand new time Tuesday nights, eight o'clock here on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Welcome to the only wrestling show that is here on the network. Welcome to Off the Mat. I'm your host, Josh Silverberg. As always with me at this time, my death triangle compadres with me will start down in Florida, Mr. Alex Lowe's. What's going on, man? Nothing much, Josh. It's been an absolutely amazing week for wrestling. We got a lot to get into with so little time, and we stick with us here all the way through the show because we got NXT, we got AEW, we got AEW Revolution, and more. So you're going to want to stay tuned throughout the whole show. Absolutely, and again, we're on till 10 o'clock, 8 to 10 o'clock now, and of course, our other new co-host who has been with us the last few weeks, he's now with us full-time, he is Mr. Lyle Gillen. What's going on, man? Nothing much. You sound very uh, disappointed to see me. You should be a little more excited, you know? <laughs> it's me, of Lyle course. Oh, Gillen, everybody! <laughs> there we go, it's more like it! <laughs> Well, uh, you know, like I said, we're excited to have everybody on with us. We're so excited for the new time that we're on from 8 to 10, you know, giving us the extra. We have to thank, of course, the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. We have to thank our own marks as well for giving us the opportunity to really, you know, broaden our horizons with the show and everything like that and showing the fans that, hey, we're more than just a one-hour show on Saturdays. We could go prime time and we could be able to give the fans what they want to hear. Um also, it's interesting, starting next week, uh, really quick, Alex, who has also been producing the show, is actually going to uh, no longer be doing that. We're going to make Alex's life so much easier now. We want Alex to be, as if, I mean, he is always 110% with us, but we want him even higher than that, always. So we're going we're gonna to dial, dial his work back, because he works too much. But we're going to dial it back. Uh, Speedy Petey, who, of course, you could see him. Um, down to the wire, below the mic with Arrow Marks, and of course with him and myself, me and Arrow on the Weekend Crunch. He is going to be producing the show with us starting next Tuesday, and the cool thing is with that is we're going to be able to have callers call in now as well. So we're going to be able to get to hear from you, the fans, not just on your on the Facebook comments or anything like that. So it's a really cool thing that we're being able to add Speedy to the program. He doesn't know really anything about wrestling, <laughs> um, but he, 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 he does know about It'll producing. He'll be entertaining so to make fun of him. Well, I mean, his screen's going to be blank, so you know, but I, you can make fun of him <laughs> with a blank screen, so I mean, I, I, I probably will, um, especially about his mom, and, probably. So, and if you know. you're uh, listening, you'll be able to call in. We'll give you the number on our Twitter account, on Facebook, so make sure you're following us, and starting next week, you can call in and ask questions. Absolutely, of course. But before we get to all that, I know Alex. I'm sure our guest is waiting. Yeah, for she's us already there. Come in, so she's on. But before, so we, before we get to her, and we're gonna let you introduce her. Let's talk. We want to talk about our app quick. This is so important for those of you that don't have our app. Please download it. The app is free. I can't stress this enough. It is free. You can download the app if you have an iPhone. Go to the Apple Store. Type in WWSRN. Go to the, if you have an Android. Google Play, type in Worldwide Sports. You get our show our show schedule, all of the content with our articles, our wonderfully written, professionally done articles by all of our writers. I know Alex wrote a couple this past week. You have recaps of the show. If you missed it, you can rewatch clips of everything that you want to see and hear again. So if you missed the show, you don't have to worry. You can just re-listen to the show. There's so much to uh, – don't mind my dog walking in the back, barking in the background – um, so, 
you know, you you get all that stuff for free, no charge at all. That's the best part about. It. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Periscope. We're all over the place. And if you can see on the ticker, our Twitter pages are up as well. No, Lyle, I will not be following you anytime soon. <laughs> so, before, uh, Alex, I know this has been a big get for us. I'm going to let you introduce our guest. I know she's waiting, and we gracefully appreciate her coming on with us tonight. So, Alex, take it away, man. So, Josh, Lyle, now it's time to welcome in our special guest. I know she has been continuing to do a tremendous job with her interviews for Ambi, a music a music blog that yeah hence her being called the interview qu- interview queen ladies and gentlemen let's welcome in alicia tau well thank you for joining us alicia <laughs> glad to Hi, have alicia, you aboard how are you i'm welcome good to the show. Uh-huh. thank you guys for having me how are you doing good good doing good we're good we're good thank you yeah, for coming on with us sure. and we're taking the time out of your busy schedule to be on the show with us so uh, as- absolutely so as someone who is passionate about the sports entertainment tr- business, for me, it's it's truly an honor to have you on with us. And uh, before we get into the interview, I've, I first want to ask you, uh, how are you handling COVID? Like, how, how how's your everyday life going with that? Honestly, this thing has sucked. And it's just not only the way it's affected me, but just everybody around me, you know. Uh, my sister's a nurse, so just seeing her day-to-day having to deal with this BS, it's just, it's obviously very unwanted. Um, but luckily, we all have our health. We're hanging in there. I can't travel as frequently as I would like just due to being in Canada right now and us having really strict uh, rules for all of this. But it is what it is. I'm making do. I'm still interviewing like a mad woman. I still have my kids campaigns going i am overwhelming people online with all of my random crap so you know i'm hanging in there um and i'm just trying to do my best you know so for what sure. for sure so my first question is what inspired you to create ambi like how did that all come about for you and what first got you into wrestling yeah so Honestly, my journey was with music and wrestling because that was really what Ambi was focused on was music in the in the very beginning. Uh, I've had a love of it since I was a kid, like out of the womb was music. And when I was about two or three was wrestling. So, um, yeah, honestly, I would just write a bunch of album reviews and single reviews during class when I was in high school. I was always finished my work early and super bored. And then my parents found out that I was using this as an outlet to just blog about these or to write up all these um artists that I love they're like why don't you post this online like why don't you just start a blog and see what happens so I threw it online instead of writing pen to paper I started typing into my laptop on a random wordpress site and next thing you know people randomly started reading it and I was like who gives a damn about any of this like this is so weird (laughs) and then I go as a teenager you know I was 16 when I started my my site back in 2012 um But when I started it, I used to go to concerts all the time with my dad, my sister, my mom, and we went to this one gig. And after the show, we met the band and had this really crappy dinky camera. And my dad said, hey, we love these guys. Why don't you ask them a couple questions and you throw it on your blog? And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I don't know what to ask them. I love them. Ah." And um, I was thrown in front of the camera and I asked the band two questions, threw it online, called a 2Q video interview. And uh, next thing you know, I was doing that every single week then it turned into long interviews and then it turned into what it is today so that's kind of my my semi-long story short but yeah it was, <laughs> it's an awesome uh, story it was... it's called a spur of the moment kind of thing you took initiative that's oh my sure. gosh <laughs> it really was it was just like hey i'm just not gonna put a, a life jacket on you and just throw you into the ocean but yeah. I'm, so, <laughs> I'm so grateful that he did because now i am here so yeah that's awesome okay so you did all in, and you did double or nothing. What happened that stopped you from signing with AEW full-time? Yeah, so I was texting with Cody about it briefly and a couple other people there, and I knew that there was interest. And at that same time, you know how it can be. It was it was a waiting game between multiple companies, and then MLW approached me uh, around that same time. And at that point, everyone was actually under the impression I had signed with AEW, but that was never, ever – the case i never put that out there neither did anyone on their team i was extremely grateful they gave me those two opportunities as a freelance journalist slash interviewer uh but then mlw came along and they're like hey this is what we'd like to offer you we want to get this done asap if you're interested i flew out uh to new york in december of 2019 and the experience was just wonderful and it was one of those things where they really wanted me in that moment 
and I could either wait for who knows how long for the other offers to come through or even potentially like be there or I could take a chance on this company that wanted to take a chance on me so I was just like you know what let's give this a go and it's been really wonderful ever since it really has Josh, I wanted your to get question. your intake uh, um, pretty much what, what got you interesting. I know you mentioned it a little bit, but what was like the, the first kind of action you saw? Was it on TV? Was it in a magazine? Because everybody always seems to have a story of how they got hooked into wrestling. I know when I first watched, it was WCW way back, way back when. What about your experience? Yeah, so the first thing I remember in terms of Watching wrestling was just being sat on the couch with my dad and all of his basketball friends. Cause we had like a basketball court across the street. And whenever they were done playing, shooting the hoops, they would watch wrestling. So I remember just sitting on the couch. And the first thing I can actually recall is Hell in a Cell, like iconic Foley Taker match. And I just remember like really briefly, like what is going on? What kind of television is this? What show is my dad watching? Like as a little girl, like you just don't, or a little kid even, you just don't realize what the hell's on your tv or like oh what's this new show um and of course of course down the line you figure all that out but it was just really really cool to me and really different and i grew up watching like tarantino films and loving comic books when i was really young so it was just this whole other world of just super cool different things so i just really fell in love with it and then throughout time i went through phases where i watched it a lot i went through phases where i didn't watch it at all and then now it's just like my world so it's kind of weird how it all works out this for sure small world that's for sure full circle totally (laughs) so alicia i've i've had to uh, i've seen a lot of your different interviews with like such as uh with brian pillman jr also with mcfoley who you just mentioned from the hell in the cell match you've had the privilege of interviewing many different wrestlers in the sports entertainment industry who's the one person you've enjoyed doing interviews with the most when it comes to wrestling Ooh, oh it's so hard um I know, like, obviously his name's been tossed around a couple times, but anytime I get to work with Foley, it's just a delight. He is just such a sweet, gentle, kind-hearted man. So I love being able to work with him. I was able to not only interview, but host a couple of, or host a panel for Dustin Rhodes. And, you know, as a kid, I remember just imitating Gold Dust. So that was super surreal and amazing. Uh, and then uh, Jay White, I've had him on my show, I think, for six different interviews. And so that's just like a really cool side of things where it's like you not only get to interview someone but there's like a friendship and you really get to show the world like some really interesting things about that person they maybe did not ever know before and that's what i'm all about so yeah those are definitely some of my favorite guests lyle so you just talked about your favorite guest what is someone that you interviewed that was it was just an awful interview that did not go well that you don't have it don't think well that one interview Ooh, okay i mean like when I had Scarlett Bordeaux on, when I had Rosemary on, MJF, now Selena De Laurent is a huge pain <laughs> in my ass. Those are all people. Jo- Joe oh, Hendry I'm so glad you brought up MJF. Day. Yeah, but like Joe, <laughs> Joe Hendry back in the day, him and I had some real beef. So there are a lot of people in wrestling who just uh, aren't a huge fan of, of interviews. And when they come, you know, one-on-one with me, they just really like to... Uh, to display their disdain and I give it right back. <laughs> <laughs> this is segues into basically the interview question. There's a beef going on in MLW. I'm going to get into the elephant of the room. It's with a certain superstar, Miss uh, Selena Lorenta, yeah. you and her. I'm going back and forth, tit for tat. I want, I, I got to know the backstory because I've seen it and, I, and I'm and i hearing the two of you and there's just the, the, the stain between you two. It, it's almost like you watch it. It's like, oh, you feel it when you're in the room between the two of you. You know, what? what is the the, rea- the relationship with you two now? And has it gotten yeah. any better? <laughs> oh, hell no. It's only getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it was. That's why I asked it. <laughs> oh, no. It's one of those things where, like, when we were both just doing indie shows before I was signed with MLW, uh, she was cool with me at shows. We talk once in a while. We have pictures together where we're just smiley and, like, you know, how you would be with an acquaintance or someone you just met. Like, there's nothing to hold against anyone. And then once I signed with MLW, she just had this attitude out of the gate. Like, whether we were filming an actual promo for them, she would just cut me off and say horrible things. When we were behind the scenes in the locker room, she'd be like, oh, you can't change in here. What are you talking about? Like, I'm the female of the locker room. I'm this, I'm that. Like, what the? Like, whatever. So she's just always been a gigantic douche. So it's one of those things where (laughs) we had a really big show coming up. And 
about maybe two months ago. This happened month and a half even. Still, it's still fairly fresh. All of this, like as far as being on. So I saw the recent interview. I watched it this morning again, and I went. I got to ask her this question later. <laughs> yeah. So it's one of those things though, where it just continues to grow, and we continue to loathe one another, and she just isn't getting any better. And it got to the point where I was like, you know what? Like there has to be some respect deep down for me. Like I have never done anything to her. I get if people don't like me, everyone's not gonna love me. Like I don't give a shit. But it's like I work with you. Respect me in some way. And she just never showed it. So I was like, you know what? You want to play dirty? I'll play dirty. So and now it just is what it is. And, I totally uh, struck a nerve with Alicia, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. But you know what, though? I want that. You know what it is? Is It's I watched the, the with the react. Like you had her on your show. And the way yeah. she was towards you was so disrespectful to even just come on your show like that and everything. And I'm yeah. like, I, I blew my mind. Like we had, we had, um. We had Leo Rush on here a few weeks ago, and we asked we asked um, I think Lyle asked Leo about ELP, and that clearly struck a nerve with Leo, (laughs) to the sense where he's he basically he he went off. So clearly, we're the ones that strike the nerves in people. So we apologize. It's all good. To the universe, someone's gonna pick up on it. Um, I will. I will say, even though deep down I am frustrated all the time and annoyed and would just love to like beat the crap out of her uh hey if people are finding some entertainment in it then at least there's some kind of positive light <laughs> exactly so if it's buzz it's good buzz that's how i look at exactly it. <laughs> you're up alex what first kicked off your idea for interviews with wrestlers as an in- influencer i what's what what came to mind when what questions come to mind at when you put together these interviews Yeah, so um, honestly, the reason that I first decided to get into wrestling and interviewing wrestlers is because I would interview so many bands and they would throw in these little wrestling nuances or phrases like they'd stone cold what me or they'd act all crazy and go into like macho man voice. And they weren't trying to be belittling, but I I think they were just doing it as an inside joke and they didn't think I would understand it. So they would do something and I'd be like, oh, that's so funny, like out of nowhere or whatever. And I'd pick up on a Randy Orton thing and they're like, wait, you know about that? I'm like, yeah, of course, like who doesn't? And then our, our interviews for music would go from talking about music to talking about wrestling. And we would just have so much fun doing that. So that opened my eyes simply to, oh my gosh, if these musicians like wrestling, wrestlers have got to love music. So why not just cross the two and do something completely unique and different? So that was mainly the main reason I went into that avenue. And now it's just like, exploded i never expected it to be what it is now i just i went into it like oh, i'll just interview people for my youtube and that's it and now it's hosting and all this craziness but and then the influencer stuff i've been doing for a few years it really started back um in like 2017 2016 where uh, the biggest thing i did was bmw hired me to go to coachella for a whole week and stay in la and just do all this really cool stuff with them and that opened my eyes thinking oh my gosh if a company like that wants to hire me i'm sure there are big ones and much smaller ones that want to work with me too and so that's been really really fun and different and yeah that's been just mind-blowing some of the brands i've been able to work with and uh yeah and then i think the last thing was just questions when it comes to those i just really try to make my interviews different i try to ask things people might not even think they want to know but as soon as we start talking about it they're like wait she's talking about this like super badass guy about barbecuing like who would have thunk you know just like little nuggets that make them human beings instead of superstars you know uh because being a superstar is awesome but when you can really relate to someone on a human level i find it's genuine and you just love them even more so so that's kind of my favorite thing and i always say i'm like a professional stalker i will deep dive (laughs) so hard into people's social medias to find anything i can that would be fun to talk about or different or just like amusing so i've literally gone back like four years through someone's twitter just to find something really good so. <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> that's awesome take it seriously <laughs> it, it, it the one interview i really enjoyed that i've seen on your youtube was the uh the brian pillman jr interview because i i actually never knew this about him that he he came up with the varsity blonde name by throwing it together from his uh dad's old tag team the Oh, right. His old his old tag team. I'm trying to remember the name. Josh, what's the name of that tag? The one with Stone. You the one with Stone Cold in WCW. 
uh, what's it? The I'm Hollywood, very Hollywood, on what's it yeah, the Hollywood, I'm, Hollywood I'm, blondes. Hollywood blondes. See, that's disturbing. That even I mean that I know. I mean I don't know. I'm just that's that's that, that makes me feel old at this point. So, <laughs> but it was it was it was a cool interview to watch because I I re- I never knew that how I never knew the backstory behind that behind that whole thing how it came together. So that was cool to learn learn that from him. Awesome. Yeah, that's one of the things that I just love about these interviews is you discover such random things about people and some are important and some aren't but even the ones that aren't important at all like they just don't matter you're like oh it's like a really cool little thing to know about them so i've known pillman since we pretty much started in the wrestling business about the same time so he's always been at shows i've been at we uh did some of the aew stuff before they were actually like aew so yeah it, it was cool being able to have him back on the show again during these crazy quarantine times and just shoot the breeze a little catch up sure for sure for sure lyle okay so i have i want to ask you this question now oh, boy. you said you were up in canada so yeah uh, you're from toronto i believe right yes i am are you a leaf fan i don't watch hockey at all like what what, what what sports teams do you follow up in up like in, none up in canada? i no, really? <laughs> dude I she's too busy <laughs> I've never been interested in sports in my life. Like, even, I always say, like, even growing up, um, my best friend had a cottage, and her family's obsessed with sports. Like, they love hockey. They love, especially up here, baseball. The, we have the Blue Jays. And so we were watching a Jays game, and it was only, like, 8 o'clock at night, and I was maybe, like, 15 years old. And I remember I was sitting on the couch at the cottage, and I, I fell asleep, and I wake up, and – uh, they were like, I was like, what are we even watching again? They were like, it was sports. And I'm like, ah, it makes sense. I literally <laughs> slept through the entire game. So there are no, no, I only like, you know, it's only sports entertainment. It's it's wrestling. Otherwise, no sports, no sports for me. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, you know, you talked earlier about, you know, digging into people and everything like that. So I did a little bit of digging, Ooh, you know, before the dive. interview, did a little deep dive. So you go back to with wrestling, you started at Impact. But also, the cool thing is, too, and I, I did not know this about you, you also did some MC work for Mick Foley for some of his yeah. stuff. That is what I saw that. So can you tell us about both of those experiences, getting your feet wet with Impact and as well as MC with Mick Foley? Because as you said, you alluded to before, one of the nicest guys on the planet. And it almost yeah. feels like he gave you a huge opportunity as well. Oh, 100%. So um, the Impact stuff came about because my first actual, like, real, real wrestling gig was for a company here in Toronto called Smash Wrestling. And they were working with a bunch of other promotions. Like, we had progress shows. We did a couple things with Impact Talent. And um, so, anyways, so Smash Wrestling started working and doing things with a company called BCW. Like, I was working both at the same time. And BCW is co-owned by Scott Demore who is one of the VPs or EVPs for Impact Wrestling. Mm -hmm. So eventually Scott saw my work when we were doing shows in Canada and he was like, hey, would you like to do stuff for Impact? And I was like, yeah, like that'd be super cool. So I worked with them for, I don't even remember how long the stint was, like a year-ish on and off. And then I had my own show for uh, about eight months to a year with uh, Santino, Anthony Corelli. We had like our own Twitch show and everything, which was really cool. And um, then from there, you know, all the, all the, Uh, all in and double or nothing stuff came about and then it just it was just nuts afterwards so that was super super cool and then when it comes to Foley I interviewed him for the first time in London Ontario uh he was just a sweetheart off the bat just for me I was like holy shit like it's literally like my first memory of wrestling right in front of me you know it's just it was crazy so he's an icon and after that interview it just went super well so we stayed in touch I interviewed him again down the line and next thing you know I see that he's hosting or he's having this big tour. Um, there were two tours I hosted for him. There was the 20 years of hell tour. And then there was one um, random one here that happened in, in Ontario. And so he hired me for both. And it genuinely blew my mind that out of everyone he could have had like hosts for him and open, he was like, Hey, would you like to do it? I was just like, ah, of course, of course. <laughs> um, He's just such a great human being, and it's cool because obviously um, it's like I know Noelle. I've interviewed her before, and she's fantastic. And I remember the last show I hosted for him maybe two years ago. He's on stage telling this story, and as he's telling it, he keeps looking over at me at the side because I was watching from side stage. He keeps looking over like to see if I'm laughing during it, <laughs> and then he refers to me, and he's like, hey. And he says something really cheeky, and he's like, my uh my second daughter over here what do you think of that story holy shit and i literally was just like 
of course he's saying it on a whim and we're just having yeah. a good time and stuff but it was just one of those things where it's like the fact that he's even saying that jokingly i was like this is nothing but like this is incredible <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, it was it was a brilliant, brilliant experience. And hosting for him allowed me to go to someone like um, a, a Dustin Rhodes or some of the other people I've hosted for and be like, hey, I've hosted for Foley. I've hosted for so-and-so. And then they give you an opportunity because they know you're legit. So, yeah, it was a really incredible opportunity. It really was. That's awesome. Yeah, That's really crazy. awesome. That's awesome. So what's oh, one good dude. What's one interview for – if you can interview any AEW wrestling star right now, currently, who would it be? Um, it's a good one. Yeah, it's tricky. I feel like I've interviewed a lot of the roster. Um, honestly, it'd be really cool for me to catch up with Cody. Yeah. Uh, the first real big string of interviews I did, I was literally two and a half months into doing wrestling interviews. So like hot out the gate, I was super fresh into the business and I interviewed uh, it was like Will Ospreay, Cody, the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega. Like it was just this crazy day of massive wrestling interviews. And this was before AEW and they were like super, super hot in Ring of Honor. And it was like a big thing. And we kept in touch ever since. And that's why those opportunities came about with them uh, that we talked about before. So I think just because of like everything Cody has been able to do for me and it has helped me with and everything, all those opportunities, just to have like a real sit down with him or virtual sit down and catch up, that'd be really, really cool. So yeah, I think uh, if I had to choose out of the whole roster right now, that's the person I'd want to speak with and catch up with. So not MJF. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> okay because so, it, it would be virtual and I, I wouldn't be able to slap him so what's the oh point? yeah <laughs> which leads us to lyle's question i think right lyle yes, now i know you're I trying to save this, this one for question. last <laughs> i tried to save this one for last now i really want to know how did he, what's the backstory and how he came up with his nickname for you I mean, oh oh tits mcgee <laughs> yep <laughs> But yes. Alicia, we want you back on the show in the future, by the way. So we we do. Uh, we do. <laughs> I know. I was like, I was like, what is he? He's called me a lot of horrible things over the years. <laughs> yeah. It's like I've known. I I've started interviewing him like four years ago. So yeah, there's a lot of mean stuff that's been shared. But um, honestly, I think he steals a lot of his lines from movies. So I think that was from like Anchorman, or it's from a movie. And we were filming this thing where I was asking him fan questions, and then he just says it. Like, you know how he just spews random bullshit out of his mouth? Yeah. So that came out, and I was like, what the fuck? Like, I had to stop like, Did you just call me? But, um, you know, I didn't take it to heart. Like, you can't with anything, and I let it fly. And then a lot worse was said on both parts going forward. So, yeah, I honestly don't know. I don't know why that came out of his brain. I don't have a story behind it. I just have the story of, like, how it happened and what I was thinking as it happened. So, yeah, he's the worst. I want to get, I want to get your, I want to get your thoughts on this because you know there's so many wrestling companies out there nowadays. We we always talk about WWE, AEW, New Japan, Ring of Honor, but MLW is one of those that just like Impact, it's starting to grow and it's getting bigger. Oh. You know, you're seeing, you're hearing names like Al, you know, Hammerstone, Leo Rush is there now. You know, at the time you had the, you know, with with the Heart Foundation that they just, you know, they recreated. Even MJF was there. Yeah. And, you know, you look back on it is how can fans really, you know, how, how can you look at MOW and compare it to other brands right now? And how far can you see it going? Can, you think it could get much bigger than those brands? Oh, I see MLW exploding, honestly. It's one of those things where we have such raw talent. And it's although we have really big names, we also have a lot of guys who have been around for quite some time, but they haven't got the recognition they deserve. But when you watch their matches, it just speaks for themselves. You're like, holy shnikes, like you're an incredible wrestler. And I think one of the biggest differences, honestly, when I watch our products compared to others, and this isn't a, a diss on other ones, it's just something even when I was like, oh, what, con what am I signing, la, la, la. This was something I really took into consideration. And it's the fact that we really have freedom on the mic. We have creative freedom so frequently, like it's incredible. And um, I just feel like it's really raw and gritty, our product from the wrestling to some of the stuff we say, we can curse like sailors, which is amazing. We just get to have fun, <laughs> like, we get to have fun with it. So, so as far as 
where we can take this. I really, it's cheesy to say, but I really feel like the sky's the limit. And because our boss is Court Bauer, who has so much experience with different companies, one of those being WWE, like his mind just never stops and never turns off. So whether he's working on new TV deals, locations we can film, crazy story arcs or new people to bring into the company, I just feel like we can take this to as massive as we wanted to and we had such big plans before COVID hit then we had to change things we for a while had to put our tapings on hold because of it just to be safe so uh yeah it's just one of those things where um now we're just being cautious but as soon as we start filming again like it's just off to the races it's gonna be I did because like I said I I just asked that because like I said there's just so many big names I mean obviously of course you're one of them being you know interviewing backstage as well but you think of the Von Erichs are there the Hart Foundation was there Leo Rush was there I mean these are yeah, and like I said, I was gonna have you know Hammer, you know Hammerstone is another one. He's so he's growing so far to where so he's talented. becoming a major superstar yep. in this business that we don't discuss enough. And, no. and it's like you know you, I always watch videos and everything on MLW, and I see the product and I respect the product because of like it's kind of like when you look at like with Ring of Honor, even you're trying you know people are like getting concerned. Oh my God, there's so many brands out there, but. It, it's amazing that you always feel like, and I know Lyle, we've discussed this. We always mm-hmm. feel like that you have to choose one brand, and and, and we're yeah. like, no, you can like all the brands and be a wrestling fan, and it's just Absolutely. so simple, and it's just ridiculous that people don't see it that way. They're so stubborn that they have to stay on WWE's lane or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's ridiculous. It's- like even as someone who is signed to a company, like for my channel, and that, that's the beauty too, MLW allows me to interview anyone. So to this day, I still interview WWE, Impact, I have ROH people on, you know, AEW people frequent on my show. So it's like, why do I narrow it down to one? I don't just watch one TV show and that's it. Like yeah. I don't just watch one movie, one style of music I don't listen to. So why just watch one brand? Like it's, it's silly to me. It is silly. All right, well, uh, Alicia, we're going to let you go now. Get on with your night. And we want to thank you. First off, thank you to Alex for reaching out to you as well. And, of course, Alicia, please don't be a stranger. Come back on the show despite Lyle, you know, asking the MJF question. <laughs> um, note to self, when we see MJF, we'll make sure we one of if, if you don't do it, we'll slap him in the face for you. So it's all good. I appreciate you. Of course. And, and, by the way, go kick Selena's ass, would you, please? Tell her oh, to shut I'm up at this you. point. Be ready. Oh, Please yeah. do so. I've had enough of her mouth, all right? That's serious. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, thank Alicia. You, Alicia. Thank you, Alicia. So what you're doing. Also, really quick, how can the fans yeah, reach out to you on social media? Yeah, how, can everybody, how can everybody reach out to you on social media and all your different platforms? Yeah, absolutely. If you guys just type up Alicia Toot in your little Google boxes, you will find my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, my Patreon account, my store, and most importantly, my YouTube channel, where there are literally thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of interviews uh, with your favorite musicians, wrestlers, bodybuilders, and celebrities. So check it out. And thank you guys for having me on the show. Awesome. Alicia. Awesome. You're thank great. you. Thank you so much. You have a good rest of your awesome. night. All right. Keep doing your work. And keep kicking ass. Take care. Bye. Take care. Bye. Oh, that was awesome, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, she's awesome. Oh, she's awesome, man. I, 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 you know what? I, 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 I'm i glad. That's one of, th- that was an interview I've been wanting to do for a long time because, as I said at the beginning, I'd been following her all of her stuff for like about two years, including her YouTube channel her, and uh, her Twitter account, just seeing all the back and forth stuff with Selena De, De, De Lorena has been interesting. Selena De La Renta, yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. Um. I mean, look, she could have kept going with the interview. I mean, of course, it's a Tuesday night. We wanted her to get on with her night and let her relax and everything like that. Yeah, of course. She's doing stuff and everything like that. It's 8.30 at night. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But um, Lyle, I know Alex said what you said. Lyle, say what you want to say about the interview, and then I'll say my piece, and then we're going to go to a quick break after that. Um, I thought it was a a great interview. She came off as genuine, super nice, and it's something that – She took your question well. (laughs) <laughs> she did, she did. She took um, like a champ, she, I tell you that much. <laughs> uh, she came off as someone who's just a very fun person to be around and talk mm-hmm. to, and that's just something that everyone who we've interviewed so far has come off like that. Yeah, you know, Leo Rush had his own persona um on online for a while where he would get guys and random fans in a video chat and just. Market like I attack them and go heal on them and 
but they interview me, such a nice guy. Same thing with Alicia. She, you interview these people, and you don't realize how amazing they are outside of wrestling and how they're genuinely awesome people. And I don't think we have interviewed someone who has. And even Raj awesome. too. Awesome. Yeah, and even yeah. Raj, yeah. Raj, 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 Raj engages the fans nonstop, and whether it's yep. positive or it's negative, he still engages them. I mean, mm-hmm. I know. Um, who are we gonna have Alex? Phil is gonna. Uh, Phil, Phil is um, coming back on. It's... Phil. Uh, what? Phil his Stamper. His name is Phil Stamper is gonna be back on with us in a few weeks. Lyle, you haven't met him. We've had him on our show twice. He's phenomenal. He's a former wrestler in the business, and he's a guy mm-hmm. that's really insightful. And you you take the knowledge that he brings. But I think what stood out to me with Alicia is really how she just finds everything so positive. Mm-hmm. She finds everything to, there to be a positive light on everything whether it's good whether it's bad whether it's nice whether it's nasty she always finds it to be in a sense of positive because she made a great point you know i brought up the Selena thing wow you brought up the mjf thing if it's being talked about it's creating buzz and if it's creating yeah. buzz that means something good is happening so exactly. that's really what you know and that's something that when we in the wrestling business you want to generate you know the buzz and she's right about mlw i i i don't it's a great product. It really, it's, it's a, it really it's a is. Product. It's it a is. Fam- I mean, amazing like I said, product. And, and, and I, I mentioned the names. You know, I know. You know the heart. The, the heart foundation was recreated there. And then um, you got. You, then you have. Uh, the, then you have Contra and uh, Aria Davari over there too. Aria Davari over there. Before MJF left, you had Dynasty, which was Dynasty, which was a great a huge, faction. Dynasty had a huge rivalry with the Von Erichs, and yep. the Von Erichs are there, and and Alexander Hammerstone, who's becoming one of the best wrestlers in the planet, is there, and Leo Rush is there, and you know you think of all these these names that you wouldn't think of that aren't getting the recognition that they rightfully deserve, and she's one of them, Alicia. She's one of the back. She is one, of, and I'm not saying this because she was on our show. I'm saying because it's a fact. She's one of the best backstage interviewers. On oh the yeah, on on today, without a she shadow of a doubt, she's without a doubt, is. one of the best um, on the planet. So she's awesome. So Alex, great job, man. Seriously, for finding her and reaching out to her, and we want her back on the show in the future, for sure. Um, so so far, the first half has been phenomenal. To our wonderful new time and our epic prime time night, that's for sure. But it's awesome to have her on, and we're excited. But when we come back, now it's time to get back to business, right, boys? Now it's time to get back into discussing. Now the fun stuff. Uh, now the fun starts. AEW. We have the recap of Dynamite. We have Revolution previewing. What are we looking forward to, and what are we not looking forward to? And... Well, WWE and the comments by Cody Rhodes, does this help or hurt AW? We'll give you our thoughts on that when we come back on Off the Mat here on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. It, it, it's the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Radio Network. Radio Network. Everybody's got a price. Rest in. Welcome back to Off the Mat with Alex Lowe's and Josh Silverberg. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the second half of the first hour of Off the Mat here on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network, along with my co-host, Lyle Gillen. Don't know what he's doing with his eyeballs. Doing a little Adam Gase there. Okay. And first Alex Lowe's. Very, very uh, uh, enjoying that right there. Uh, yeah, Lyle, Lyle. On your Tuesday nights. I oh well, no, you might want to. Well, I, I, I want I want the fans to stay tuned with us, not get off. But uh, well, of course, along with Alex flows as well. Uh, I'm Josh Silverberg. First off, we want to once again, we want to thank uh, Alicia too for yeah, joining thanks, us. Thanks, Ali- Alicia. Yeah, she was phenomenal. Yeah, she her was questions really, were it, great. It was phenomenal. It was great it was, interview. She, it was. She was awesome. She was great uh, and so much insight and everything like that. Yeah, she work, had but, she uh, had phenomenal insight. And yeah, it was so, one. It was one of my favorite interviews to do because, as I said before, I'd been following her work, and just about every interview I've seen her do with with uh, all the wrestlers for different wrestlers for AEW, Impact, WWE, she just hits right on the mark with the questions, and that's what it makes makes her interviews very interesting, and uh, it's just phenomenal to see all the great work she's been doing, and I I can't wait to see what. What can't wait to see what what else she brings to her YouTube channel and to her blog. 
For sure. But let's get to it. All right. Now it's time to kick it into business now, boys. The fun is over. It's time to start brawling with our, our pre- you know, what we're looking forward to and what we're not. And look. There's a big pay per view on Sunday, which I I, I I have no idea why AEW is doing it on a Sunday, not a Saturday. I love when AEW does it on it's Saturdays. Because there's but... a UFC event on Saturday. Well, I don't care, Lyle. All right, so don't be a know it all. I don't give a damn what the answer is. I you want actually it on don't know why. You say I don't I know don't why. Care. I told you why. Well, I don't want to know why now. <laughs> you said it, so anyway. Um, but uh, no. So AEW Revolution is going to be this Sunday, March the seventh, I believe. Uh, I'm sure. Bleacher Report, you fight, you know, fight TV, the usual channels it's going to be on, pay per view, of course, as well. It's going to be on all those channels, but we want to get into um, what we liked about, you know, something we liked about Dynamite this week, and then we're going to get into what we liked about Revolution. So, Alex, I'll begin with you first. What is something you thought stood out with Dynamite this week that you thought maybe is a positive or a negative? So, the one in thing. To going forward. The one thing that uh, stood out to me the most from AEW Dynamite this week was the the interaction between Big Money Matt Hardy and Hangman Out and Page in the Dark Order. I like where the development's going there, but I I can't get myself into the Big Money Matt gimmick. It uh, for some reason I I'm just it hasn't warmed up to me enough yet, and I feel like I feel like we're we're better off with the broken Matt Hardy gimmick. But I, I can understand why AEW made this move. Why they decided to go with the Big Money Matt gimmick. And it's because they wanted to add different insight. They wanted to add a bigger twist to the show and make things more interesting. And by doing that, not, not only have they helped themselves, but they've helped two young rising stars in AEW Private Party. For sure. Um, um, I, I agree with him. I think that the Big Money Matt gimmick is not the greatest, but... I also think that the Broken Matt Hardy gimmick in this environment would be absolutely abysmal and be way worse. You would see all the weaknesses of it that is just very glaring when you don't have a crowd. And that's why it was important to go to a gimmick that didn't need a crowd so much. Like, look what happened with Orange Cassidy. He needed he needed the crowd for his gimmick. and Yes, he did. It wasn't the same when there was no fans, and no, he's kind of stopped doing a lot of what he usually does without the crowd, because I I think characters that rely on a crowd so much, and then you continue doing that, and we've seen how how what happens in WWE when you act like the crowd is there when it's very obvious it's not, it comes off as very awkward. It did yeah, it at does. First in WWE, AEW did a decent job of of adjusting to that, and. Uh, I think having the crowd at ringside, well, they're, they're extras that were going to be at Dark or guys who weren't on uh, Dynamite that night. But yeah, it just – Broken Matt Hardy wouldn't work without a crowd. And I think Big Matt – Big Money Matt, it's not the ideal gimmick, but it's better than Broken Matt Hardy right now, I think. But Alex uh- is, makes a fair point about it. No, I, I and I agree with that. So I wanted to get your take on this really quick. It's kind of a side thing. I was actually thinking about this mm-hmm. um, last night. Are we enjoying BTE lately, or are we like am um, with it? I'm, I'm very mixed to, with. I'm very mixed with it. I'm not able to watch it as much, uh, but when I do, I mainly just watch your Dark Order segments because that's the best part of the show. It is. And yeah, they it have, definitely. They have is. been the best part of AEW since the pandemic what they have become from a group that was trying to be serious but they were all jobbers to go on a bte and just being absolutely hysterical you look at what the young bucks did uh cody rhodes and the rest of the elite to really start AEW with bte they got over through that and you look at what dark water is doing they're doing the same thing they're getting over through bte and that's how and now they're trying to take that character from bte and bring it over to Dynamite, and it's it's changing up the characters a little bit, and I think they're doing a great job, but overall, BTE is not what it used to be. And yeah, that's, not, it's, that's I, always I why I asked. Yeah, that's always why I asked, and Alex, I want to get your thoughts on it in a second, but it's that's 
only because now when I feel like when I'm watching BT, I used to be so entertained by it. It was so mm-hmm. funny. The whole show yeah. was great. Being, you know, like every segment was great. It was perfect, especially when they were in New Japan. It was awesome. Everything was so fun. fat ass. Masa was there. It was just kind of. I like have a him on the side on Facebook, by the way. He is a great guy. Oh, uh, he's. I mean, but but it was like you know when you had the whole gang together with the elite and everything like that and everything. But now it's like now Cody's not on it anymore. Kenny's not really on it anymore. Some of the segments, it's almost like I feel like when I'm watching some of this stuff, not it's almost like it's pulling, it's like pulling teeth watching, and I get, I, I don't even yeah. laugh at 95 percent of the show now. I'm like, this is stupid. Like this is like the, you know, like I don't know. I I, I watched it I, last week's episode, I, I, and my dad walks horrible. in when Sammy Guevara is naked with the. BTE That's championship funny. covering his junk. And it was it was <laughs> kind of funny, but then my dad walks in, he looks at the TV, sees Sammy Guevara naked, looks at me, and I'm like, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, I don't know how watched... to explain that. Alex, have you watched BTE at all recently? Oh yeah, I've I've watched I watched the the recent. Now, do you like it? Do you not like it? Where are you on it? So I I like it. I'm I'm somewhere in the middle of it. I'm still trying to understand it, but I love I love how they're pitching the Dark Order every week in BTE. I also did like the uh, I liked the the little battle they had with uh, LAX and uh, Sammy Guevara and that that uh, little fight they had a little scripted fight in the back. Uh, I forget what it was. It was like a ninja fight or something like that. It was like oh I know yeah 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 I know what you're talking about it was um I'm trying to understand what it was because it was it, it was, was it, it was um I'm trying to remember oh my god who was in that fight with the who did they go up against I can't remember uh Vicky Guerrero was there I know that yeah well she always makes bad she, she always makes random cameos I only asked this like I said because I know it's not dynamite but it it, it, it is AEW related yeah and it, it was is. on my mind because yeah. I was watching it even yesterday and I said. I sat there and I was done watching and I said, I almost don't even want to watch it anymore. It's so crappy. Yeah, it's I just watched just, it to me, it's just, it's just, it's just, but, but, but you see, even that. So what or, makes Dark Order funny? What? what I mean, Lee. who? Brody Lee uh, put a major part in it. Exactly. And mm-hmm. he's not there anymore. And to me, it's just not the same. I don't know. I don't know. They had that one segment when they had oh. Hangman ride 10. I, and that was hysterical. No, I know what you're talking no, about. No, no, or like, that to me when I think of it, it was like you know. Or that uh, one the segment, main, but... or that one segment when they're all having a sleepover and they're all sitting in the tents. Oh, the slumber party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, but I don't know. It's like I get what you're saying, Lyle. I absolutely do. It's just uh, without. I mean, I mean, come on, dude. You, you're telling me you don't miss Brody Lee calling John Silver at Peckerhead? Oh, hundred percent. I mean, come I, 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 I missed that so much. It was that yeah, was that was. I mean, come on! What, what, what is it? When um, who's the other one? Alex Reynolds. He's going. He's got his. I think his uncle's. What is it? His um, uh, what, what's it called? He's getting um, oh my god, a briss at the briss, and then Brody <laughs> Lee takes his robe off and social hits him on the phone and goes, "You're welcome." I mean, come on, that's just so funny because you, just, you know you see Brody Lee and the Wyatt family six years ago. And then you see Brody Lee on the BTE, and it's like mind blown because like, it's the same guy. You know what I mean? That's that's just I just found it to be just interesting. I just, I, I just found it to be just an interesting topic. But um, um, Lyle, what did you find on Dynamite this week that you really caught your attention, good or bad? Um, I want to say you look back to where Lance Archer or how Lance Archer has developed over the years, going from a guy who was in WWE on the main event show that they have. Um, then in New Japan, tag teaming with uh, uh, Davey Boy Smith. And na- then he did that character after Smith went to MLW. He started the uh, Murder Hulk monster character in New Japan. And it just caught fire. And what he has been doing in AEW, I think, has been fantastic. His match with Phoenix was great. I really enjoyed it. I think it was the best part of the whole show. Oh yeah, it, and, it um, was. I'm really excited to see where he goes in that uh in, in the in the ladder match. I hope he wins. I hope he gets that the TNT title finally, which I think he should have beat Cody for. I think that was the wrong decision. But um, I I would love to see him get a big push and get the TNT title somewhere down the line soon. Oh, uh, I remember that 
that decision. I thought it was a terrible decision that they had. I think, to lose I, to Cody. In, in, I think the plan was from that point was to have Cody eventually put over Darby. I think that was the entire point that they were doing. Yeah, I know, but even um, still, though. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I like I said, I, I, would, I wish <sighs> Arthur won to. Well, uh, to me, um, the thing that said to me, and hey, look, it might be biased for me and everything like that, but I love the promos that they're doing with Sting and Darby and, oh, yeah. and, and FTW. It yeah, was, was phenomenal. Awesome. I love it. I mean, now, I, mean, now Sting, and, I mean, now Sting and Darby are kidnapping Taz's son and putting him in the five. I mean, this just adds an element to the rivalry that I I, I think and, when you when you, when you see it and you look back on all this stuff, I mean, it's true. When, now, look, I think Sting eventually, I think Sting will eventually distance himself from Darby and just do you know be some you know do his own thing. Possibly, I don't know. We'll see where that leads to. But I'm intrigued by this whole match because first off, the street fight is alone it's down in Darby's alley. Right? Oh yeah, it, it Darby is. Allen Darby Allen could do. Darby Allen does whatever he wants. He can he just. Wants. He can do Allen just can about do. anything. You've you've yeah. seen, you've seen what Darby I'm, Allen Darby Allen can do in matches. Yeah. My favorite thing that I enjoy seeing him do, I've seen. I've only seen him do it a couple times, or every once in a while he'll do it. But he'll put thumbtacks in the back of his skateboard, and then he'll do an ollie off the guy's back, and the thumbtacks go in the guy's yeah. back. That's that's something, and that's something I've never seen. In wrestling before, and that's a cool element. Sure. Um, I, I know me and Alex spoke about this on the phone earlier, but I hope it's a cinematic match. I have heard reports that Sting is doing... Uh, He's taking he bumps, bumps, yeah. That's I've heard that. I hope it's not true. Um, but he, he did take one on Dynamite, but the report was that he's heavily padded, and the ring was padded underneath where they were dropping him. Um, but there were also reports that he was going to be only doing cinematic matches from when he first signed. I I don't know what to expect. I'm interested to see what they're going to do, but I'm very cautious because of things past, and I I hope they make the right decision. What are your thoughts on that, Josh? Uh, what are your thoughts uh, on I mean, Sting possibly I, doing I cinematic? With, I mean, I agree with Lyle. I think it, they they have to do it in a way where it's very you know they have to be sure that. Everybody is safe, right? Mm-hmm. Isn't that the most important thing? Your number one, if you're Tony Khan, the number one priority should be, and even with Vince McMahon and with everybody, is your is your talent. Your talent safety is the number one priority. That always has to be the case. I mean, you know, Darby, you could trust taking bumps and stuff like that. It's a matter of how much will Sting take in this match and what kind of bumps will he take? Is it going to be like a barbed wire swing to the back or something like that? Is it going to be something like that? I mean, Sting... Yeah, you have to remember when Sting was in TNA, he had cinematic matches. He had a barbed mm-hmm. wire massacre match with Abyss. And so he's Sting has done this before. This is not something that's out of the realm of okay, he's never done something like this. This is going to be impossible to pull off. He's been in the ring for 30, 40 plus years, but he doesn't always do. This guy has done it all, seen it all, lived it all, been through it all. And, and if if I if I could trust. Two guys that I think I could trust with this whole thing. One is Sting, and another guy I think that's going to have an integral part in this creativity is going to be Taz. I think Taz is going to have an integral part in this thing because Taz is a veteran with these kinds of, you know, when you see cinematic matches, you think of like hardcore matches and stuff like that. I think he's somebody you look at. That's why you have in this rivalry, you have two veterans in Sting and in Taz who are two guys that, you know, Brian, you know, um, what uh, you know, Brian? Um, oh my God, what's his last name? Cage. Brian Cage. Thank you, Ricky Starks and St- and, and Darby Allen can all lean on because mm-hmm. let's let's call what it is, guys. These are kids in Sting and Taz's world. They're kids, <laughs> and they are, and and, and, that, and that's why. So are we? When, exactly. But but the thing is, <laughs> we've seen the cinematic match before. It's different than seeing it and doing it. You know. So that's why I think when you have somebody like Taz in this rivalry and you have somebody like – it's like we keep talking about it's going to be Sting. Sting's in charge of this. Sting knows what he's doing. Sting's heavily lit on this. There's a reason why they put Taz in this rivalry too because Taz yeah. is another veteran that these guys can lean on and say, hey, how do we pull off this cinematic – that's why it's – what is it? Like a street fight kind mm-hmm. of – it's a street yeah. fight. I, think, that's why I wonder if they're going to do together. it like the pro, uh, PNP and Best Friends street fight. 
I, I oh, can picture Lord, it. I don't know, but that's tough, though, man. They've that's already gonna, established where the street fight is, though, I, technically. I know, but, dude, don't, don't. Dude, this is thing 60 something years old coming off of the Oh, Alistair. it would be a terrible I mean, decision. God, it's almighty. It would be listen, dumb as hell. I think, I think it would be a great match. I do you too. You just want to make sure you you, you just got to make sure, sure everybody's safe. Okay. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. You want to make sure that Sting is okay coming out of this, right? And that's that's the most difficult. important thing. And it is going to be difficult, but that's why you have a partner like Darby Allen, who can take most of the bumps, can take yeah. most of the of, of the action, and Sting is there to be assist, to be the hero, to be the guy that helps when he needs to. He swings the baseball bat. He does what he does. You know, the, the Stinger Splash, the Death Drop, one, two, three. So like Splash that. into a car? Exactly. Well, I mean, you could if you really wanted to. Listen, he could suplex Ricky Starks on a window. Uh, I'm sure Ricky Starks would. Dude, Ricky Starks, like Alex said, he already had thumbtacks from Darby Allen skateboarding to his back. I, I would imagine at this point, a car <laughs> yeah. windshield can't be any worse than that. I don't know. Oh, I think the windshield would be worse. I don't that know about that. Shards, yeah. The glass shards is fine, but you're having pointy. A thousands of pointy things going into your back. Some tacks don't do much to you, though. Really? So next time, I'll try it on you with a skateboard. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll, do it on, we'll do it Sunday before the paper. Um, we'll go live. Okay, we'll do it. You know what? Page. You know what? Let's just do it to Matt. Well, Matt okay, I'm down. <laughs> Alex doesn't know who Matt is. Matt's a friend of ours who doesn't Ask watch him how it feels. He doesn't watch any wrestling at all, so he's coming to watch the pay-per-view with us because he's intrigued by this barbed wire death match. You know, he's like, come on, so we're just going to involve him in any massacre kind of stuff we're going to do that night. We'll film it and we'll put it on the Twitter page for Off the Mat. We'll put it on the website too. But um, let's get to basically really quick before we go to break in a few minutes. Let's get to Revolution. And my thoughts are this has a chance to be the best AEW pay-per-view they've ever produced. When you look at the card and you look at the way the matches are going, I mean, they're doing something that's never been done in the United States before. That alone can overtake any – work that AEW's ever done before so alex give me a match that you're most looking forward to now don't think about it for a minute don't say the obvious which is the barbed wire death match because i know all of us here are, are interested at how that's going to look but like if you wanted to pick that you can but be more detailed as to why but what is something you're most looking forward to with revolution La, you'll go after I'm looking forward to the Young Bucks taking on MJF and Chris Jericho. And I, based on what happened last week, I like how they put a spin on it, into it going into this pay-per-view. You saw that the Young Bucks' father was attacked and brutally assaulted backstage by MJF and Chris Jericho. And then the Young Bucks tried to come to his aid. and they, uh, You saw, I think it was Nick or Matt, one of them was chasing the car. As they that were, was. Yeah, as they were driving away. So this this is going to be personal for the Young Bucks. This is going to be a personal fight between him, between these two teams now because MJF and Chris Jericho, they're very good at getting under people's skin and just taking shots any way they can to take advantage of a team like this. And they're trying to make the Young Bucks vulnerable. And this is a good way to do it. So... I'm very, I'm very intrigued. I'm very interested to see how this match goes, and I, I think, I think it's going to be MJF and Chris Jericho that win this match. Uh, Lyle, give me something that is intriguing you a lot about Revolution. What's a match that really sticks out to you the most? Um, now we're not talking about the barbed wire death match, and I mean you can if you want. No, you, uh, you said that the rule. I'm going to stick to it. Okay. Um, now, with what Alex said, the Young Bucks deliver every match they have. I'm not worried about that match. But, like, let's talk about the rest of the card. You said it could be the best pay-per-view they had. I don't know what to expect from this card. You ha- you could have Nyla Sheeta again, and I will stab myself in the eyes if I have to watch another <laughs> Nyla Rose match on a pay-per-view. I well, think it she is, is happening, isn't it? Nyla won. No, she won the American bracket. She is now facing Ryo... Oh, Maybe, I, I whatever see. her name okay. is, for, for to win um for the overall tournament. I really right. hope Ryo R- wins because I really don't want to see Nyla Rose again. I am so tired of watching her. I really am. I think she is terrible in the ring. Mm-hmm. I don't know what their obsession is. When yeah. we picked this segment 
Yeah. I was going to say Thunder Rosa and Cheetah. That's not happening! <laughs> um, <laughs> now, let's talk about the rest of the card. Now, you have the, the ladder match, which isn't done yet. You have that tag team battle royal, which that's going to be probably on the buy-in. Then you have uh, Miro and Kip Sabian versus uh, Orange Cassidy and uh, Chuck Taylor. Chuck Taylor. You have Matt Hardy versus Hangman Page. What am I missing? Because the rest of this card besides the Young Buck match and the Kenny Omega match, uh, Sting. I honestly the Sting match, yes, Sting which, that's three matches. Which if Sting doesn't pull Matt Hardy and get knocked out, like the match could probably be pretty good. But like, let's be real, the rest of the card is not very good. You look at that and you think about the matches. It's nothing crazy. It's nothing crazy, nothing. but I, I think you know what it is? The reason why I say what I say is because the card, it, it doesn't look great, but there are a couple of things that stand out. Um, the Sting well, match. Let's look, I, at, I, what, 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 let's look at what Revolution did a year ago. That was the well, best was paper in 2020. Yeah, it was and, very and different. I, I, I think that, that is by far the best review they have ever done, and it's going to be very hard to top that. You look at that well, entire card up, up to down. That was a great paper. Well, you do you do have the ladder match. That could be a very have, interesting, very yeah, interesting match. Now the they la- have they're the going to have one mystery guy in it. Depends on who that is. Um, I want to hope that they have Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker too. If they do that, which there are talks that they might, I've heard people suspecting it. Then I am very much going to pick that match as my one to look forward to. They had a phenomenal match the first time. I think Britt Baker has gotten immensely better in the ring. Thunder Rosa is Thunder Rosa. She's probably the one of the top three female watch wrestlers you, in the world say, today. Watch what you say. <laughs> She's one of the top three female wrestlers yes. today. Um, I I think that match could be phenomenal. Their first match was great, and I I if they do that, I would. That's my that's my pick. I only look at it like this, and the reason why I said what I said is this. I I have about three or four matches I'm very much looking forward to seeing. The latter match being one. Um, Sting Darby versus Cage and Stars because of the intrigue of that match. Uh, the Young Bucks always deliver. And the Exploding Barbed Wire Death match. So that's four matches on the card that I'm very much looking forward to seeing where I – you know, it will stand out to where I could say, okay, th- this makes the, and depending on how good the matches I'm, are. I'm also very disappointed. And I, that we're seeing Young Bucks versus Jericho and MJF. I do oh, not want, you want that to match. See Gals and, you want to see Gals Anderson. Of course. No, you, everybody did. I, I've said it before on the show. I've said it before on the show. I wanted pride and powerful to beat, uh, the young, the young Bucks do them two versus MJF and, uh, Jericho, and then ah, do Bucks okay. versus uh, Good Brothers. That's I what agree. I wanted. I think that would have been better story development, and I think that would have been a better overall card. I agree with you. I agree. No, that's very much fair. I, I agree. Yeah, that I is. That definitely would have been, it would have added more depth. To yeah, the because card with sure. because with the Kenny Omega, I mean, excuse me, with the with the uh, Young Bucks and MJF and Chris Jericho. They didn't really go into an in-depth storyline as much there. They kind of just like pieced yeah, it, l- pieced it little started. by yeah. They kind of just pieced it little by little and didn't really a give awkward. us yeah. It was a little awkward. They didn't give us much there, which is disappointing because they have the deepest tattoo division in wrestling. They still and... do. And no, I know that's what I said they they do. I said they. Do. I thought you said they had. Okay, I'm sorry. No, no, I said they have, and. It... You know, you have all these great tattoos, you know, like uh, Lucha Brothers, uh, Jurassic Express, Good Brothers, FTR, FTR. Uh, you know, all these teams. And you put a tag team in there that's not really formed as a tag team. Yeah, they're not developed. Yeah, what, they're not developed and, fully and enough. Story line, it's for a storyline for I know, all I know or it's double for, or nothing. No, I know it's for a storyline, but at the same time, this is the thing because Kenny and Hangman won the tag team belts already too. So if Jericho and MGF win it too, that's now two of the four teams that have ever won the tag team yeah, championships. Not you're really 100% correct. Team. That's just that's just so weird to me. I mean, it just throws me off because you have all their tag team division is stacked. Remember what their criticism was for why they were going to be 
not their criticism towards AEW. What uh, what they were doing to criticize other people and other other promotions for why they what they why they were going to make such, the uh, their tag division so much better. They said they weren't going to be having random tag. tag and then teams. meanwhile, where's FTR? Where where where's FTR right now? They're fighting the uh, Jurassic Express. The Jurassic Express. I what? think they're in the um. I think they're in the uh, Battle Royal, which like oh, it's kind of stupid, but it's if stupid. they're going to be doing. If they're gonna be doing uh, Young Bucks versus FTR, I know it's gonna be in front of a or crowd. Or I know yeah. it's gonna be in front of a crowd. Yeah. I know. I understand it. I completely get that. That's totally fine. But ever since the ever since FTR lost, lost the belts, the belts. it's where yeah, where they, where are they, they going? This with... is, I mean, this is like WWE all over again with them. Well, why it, are we get? Why are we losing them in the shuffle? I, I, I thought about that too. I don't know where. Why? I don't know. What's going on with FTR? They're right too good to be doing. And look, their matches yeah. with Jurassic Express is good, but the fact that I I have, you know, Jungle Boy beating um, Dax, you know, Dax, it's just so random to me, you know. And now I got Tully Blanchard wrestling on Wednesday. Well, we took out Arn Anderson. Is... Arn Anderson said that you're not going to ex- don't expect much from Tully Blanchard. He's I probably going to do like one or two moves. Good. Um, maybe, I, I don't know what to expect fully, but based off of what Arn Anderson said, don't expect much. We're worried about Sting's age. Yeah, Tully Blanchard's going to be on freaking Dynamite that, that's Wednesday. Very right? fair. <laughs> that's a very fair criticism. <laughs> it's uh, so like, like look, what, what, we're going to get Ric Flair back in and start having him wrestle. <laughs> you, know, the, you know, the only way... Uh, I, I, something just FTR came to mind. They, my... they don't need this FTR. They don't no, need this. They don't. But so, that does give me an idea for the for uh, Tully Blanchard's match on on Wednesday. What if they had a uh, Jungle Boy with one arm tied behind tied behind his back fighting Tully Blanchard? That no, would be have it be Marco. Have it be Marco. Actually, have it be Marco. Yeah, have it be Marco. That would be even better. There you go. That, that's intriguing. I. Uh... Jungle Boy, yeah, that, that's not good for him. I, I, I'm very high I on just, Jungle Boy. Uh, I think he's going to be great, but do it to Marco Stun, who I really don't get. I mean, it's though. just throwing me off. I, I'm just, I, I'm having in my head, I know we got to go to break, but I'm just having in my head the stack list of tag teams that AEW has. I'll be, I'm going I'm to be, I'm going to be so pissed off if MJF and Jericho win on Sunday. I will too, yeah. yeah. This is so, t- I mean, this is awful. And we know it how is awful. the Young Bucks, but it has nothing to do with that. I like, it's like, you you have about nine there's, or ten dominant tag teams on the roster. And exactly, you're just putting together these tag teams. There's so many different directions you can go with these tag teams. You have the acclaimed. You have the varsity blondes. Proud, proud and powerful. However, proud fair, and powerful. To be fair, proud, proud, proud and powerful have been anything since they've got here. To be fair, to be fair, to AEW doing that, and also to WWE who does that. New Japan does this every year when they have the World Tag League. They put random guys together all the time. Oh, I that's know. That's how oh. Finjuice started. Don't even, well, don't, even, great. don't even get me started on New Japan's tag team. <laughs> it is the worst. It is almost Since as what? bad as Since... WWE's. It's, it's, it's like Since Josh. Before Machine left. Josh, Machine it's like left. putting... Holy god crap. Awful. It's like putting Hanma before with... Machine to... left, it's god awful. Dude, it's like putting... It's worse than WWE. It's like it putting Han- it's, it's G-O-D. <laughs> it's like putting it. Hanma with Tamora. <laughs> How's this fighting? And honestly, and G-O-D is constantly commenting at the end of their post-match comments uh, to the Good Brothers and the Young Bucks and Omega. <laughs> it's like having G- what are they doing? Josh. <laughs> It's like having G.O.D. take on Tamaki Hanma and Tamoro Ishii. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't. But they do that. That's what they do. Hold on. And Alex, I've said this to you before. Lyle, you know how I feel about G.O.D. What do I think of G.O.D.? They are the most what in the tag team division. The most overrated team in the tag team (laughs) division. They have never had a match. So wait, we need to do some takedown breakdown. And I have said... That's the match that I remember G.O.D. being in. I have me never and, seen a match that they've made it memorable. Me and you did this on Takedown Breakdown. Mm-hmm. I said I thought they were they were near top five. And then we sat there and we rattled off tag teams and we mm-hmm. came to the conclusion at the end of that that they might not even be top 15. I remember. 
And Alex, I remember Alex, you had him. You had him number, I think, two or one. Yeah, I did. <laughs> and I flipped. We had I this did. entire conversation. <laughs> we went down and listed tag teams, and then we were like, wait a minute, we haven't even listed G.O.D. yet. I, I, and I like, listed. Are we are they better than all these guys? Like, no. No. Because I listed, I, I listed, ta- when we did the tag team listing, I listed it. I don't remember the order, but the five I remember, I had Undisputed Era. I had Red Dragon in there. I had The New Day. I had The Briscoes. I had The Young Bucks. And I had The Lucha Brothers. Lucha Bros. Those are the teams. I remember that. And, 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 and the reason why, you know... The Briscoes have accomplished a crap ton in this in this in this in this in this in, they in, have. In, they for, have. for wrestling. The the New Day, the same thing on the biggest company of them all. They have become over, not so, and they've had memorable matches against the Usos. They have, yeah. Them and, the, Usos, and the Dudleys as well. You remember Red Dragon speaks for itself. Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly they speak for they're, themselves. They're phenomenal. And then you have the Unbucks and Lucha Brothers. And even you could put FTR in there if you really want, but lately FTR is not there. Because they don't do uh, anything. And they're still putting on quality matches, though. Okay, like, that's talk, fine. Let's talk about their match with Jungle Boy. Like, the yes. match that Jack had with Jungle, Jungle, uh, Jungle Boy. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold that on match now. match was phenomenal. Why? But, but, hold on. I'm going to ask Alex this. Alex, was that a singles match or was that a tag team match? <laughs> that was a singles match. Thank you. It's not right, a tag right. team match. It does not count, so therefore it's disqualified. And on that okay. note, we are going to take a break because we are yeah. way overdue for a break. <laughs> Alex Already. is going to flip at the clock. <laughs> we hope you fans are enjoying the show tonight. We're having a ball here. I got to tell you, when we come back, we're going to get to some WWE stuff. There's a lot that's going on in the last couple, 24 hours. There's a new WWE champion. I don't know how these guys feel, but I'm Can I go first when we do this? Can, Hold I, on. can I go first? Hold I'm on. gonna go first. You like you like my I'm students in school. I am going to tell you why Bobby Lashley being the new WWE champion was the greatest decision WWE has made in quite some time. And I'm gonna tell and, you why and, that entire role is horrible. Well, that's an easy thing, but Bobby Lashley winning the championship <laughs> was the only good moment. And there's something going on with NXT. We'll let you know what it is when we come back. We'll give you a hint. They're changing days here on Off the Map on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. We'll be right back. <laughs> it, it is the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Radio Network. Everybody's got a price. Rest in peace. Welcome back to Off the Map. With Alex Lowe's and Josh Silverberg. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back here live on Off the Mat. I guess we're kind of in like in between the first half of the uh, the second hour. So, because <laughs> yeah, we're in I will the fourth you, quarter, third quarter. I I will tell you this: that <laughs> moment right there between the three of us that felt like takedown breakdown to me a little bit. I had Al- that take down right now vibe. No, that's fine. <laughs> that that's fine. That's fine. But you know what? Alex is now par- has now been initiated into it. So congratulations! Alex- there you go, Alex. You're officially involved. You're in the initiated match. into a defunct radio show. Yeah, pretty much. You're fi- yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Jess Over. Of course, along with me, Loud Gill and Alex Slows. Um, we are here on off the mat again. Really quick. Before we get into the stuff with WWE, we want to talk to you about how you could download our app. It is so important. It is so vital to this to this network for what we're doing. If you have an iPhone, go to the Apple Store, type in WWSRN and Android. You go to the Google Play Store, you type in Worldwide Sports. WorldwideSportsRadio.com as well. You can check out all of our free articles. Like I said, Alex has written so many great stuff the last few weeks. It's really good. Check it out for sure. Uh, you can watch recaps of the show, clips from the show. If you missed the show at all, uh, check out our schedule of what's being, what's going to be going on. Our bio is about everything. I know, Lyle, you still got to get that bio in. So uh, yeah, we'll I do. For sure. I will. Don't worry. The I'm fans want to know. The fans want to know about you. Wait, people give a shit why. about me. Well, I didn't. Say I know. It, you I did. know you don't. <laughs> I don't know if Alex does. So I don't know. <laughs> Alex, you. You didn't say a word, so I'm going to say no. 
Oh, what? He still, he still has his <laughs> feet. Oh, oh, man, you're putting, you're, you're putting the pressure on me, man. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, um, no, but listen, there's so much good stuff on there, so much good content. We want you to check it out. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Periscope. We're all over the place. On the on the ticker as well that Alex has shown our information that you can reach out to us as well. On Twitter, uh, at Show Slows, Lyle OTM, and myself, Josh Silverberg. So let's get to some WWE stuff here. And I guess we'll start with the breaking news. I guess it kind of makes sense about NXT, right? Yep, guys? NXT I mean, is moving we, we, we to heard, Tuesday nights. We heard the news. Yeah, we heard the news early today. Um, Lyle tweeted it. And then Alex confirmed it, that um, the reports are starting April 13th on Tuesday night. NXT is going to be going um, on Tuesdays. I'm guessing they're still going to stay on the USA Network, is what I'm guessing. Um, well, Fightful confirmed it. I, I, don't, I, want to, I would like to give them the credit for that. That was all. Fightful confirmed it, and uh, Matt podcast or something, they, they reported it. So yeah, I don't want people so to I mean, interpret what you said that I, I reported anything or Alex did. Well, I think they know what they mean yeah. by you sending it to me. They know what I mean yeah. by that. And if they, listen, you don't have those inside sources to be able to report no. that anyway. No. So if people believe that, then they're <laughs> sad. So I'm just saying. Um, but the thing is this, you know, we look at the schedule going forward now. It's going to be um, Monday Night Raw Mondays, NXT Tuesdays, Dynamite Wednesdays, SmackDown Fridays, also Impact Tuesdays, uh, and you're going to have New Japan. You're going to have pay-per-views on Saturdays and Sundays, which is generally when they are. So you're talking, like I said, Raw Monday, NXT Impact Tuesday, AEW Wednesday, Friday SmackDown, and, the pay-per-views and, and New Japan. Yeah, and the Power's coming back too. But they're on, on a, I think, like... They're on fight, but they're also on at like I think like four or four thirty. They're on during the day. Anyway. Well, you could watch they're... it at any time. It's oh, so the Ring of Honor shows, so that they would go on there, and you could watch them at any time you want. It's not like yeah, so you have I mean, to watch it only when it's live. Um, Alex, I'll start with you first on this. What are your thoughts with NXT moving on Tuesday nights? Because I know for a fact, uh. Lyle and I have discussed this. You and I have discussed this on time to time. What are your thoughts about the move? And we've asked guests this too on our, on what, if we think they should move or not. I think it's. A, I thought it was a smart idea to move it to Tuesday nights because now, now, aid, now, now, NXT has more time to come up with ideas during the weekend and into Monday instead of just uh, having to rush everything going into a Wednesday night show because now they have more time to prep. And now, now their storylines might actually make their storylines might be more developed this time because we've seen storylines where uh, leak out of Del Fantasma against Breezango. That's that wasn't really developed as much now, and I think we're going to see more development into different stories and outlooks on NXT. Lyle. Um- I'm going to say this right now. NXT is a great product. They do a phenomenal in-ring work, but their biggest Achilles heel was that they did too much to try and counter-program AEW. They did a lot, and they forced a lot of matches early when yeah, they kept... didn't really need them. And I think... Oh, I'm sorry. What's up, Alex? I, I was going to agree with you. Yeah, NXT, kept, they kept countering back AEW on a Wednesday night, and that, that to me is just too, too much pressure on NXT. And now that they have their own night, they don't have to worry about that stuff anymore. No, they, they, can go, they can go any route and they want. Y- y- you look back at what AEW does, for the most part, they don't directly counter-program what NXT does. They would still continue their storylines if NXT did a big match. They would still continue trying to build. And I'm very excited to have NXT on their own night. But now that they can show what they are capable of live without direct competition... And they could build their storylines, develop wrestlers, and do everything without having to worry about counter-programming another company. Without having to worry about rushing a match. It's I, I, I want to see what they're going to be able to do now. I hope they go on a roll. I hope they are the NXT of old that we know can be amazing. And they haven't been that for a majority of the year. Now, that's mainly because of the pandemic. But I, I, I want to see what... what they could do on Tuesday nights, and I think that that's the best thing for them. And I'm very happy it's happening. Alex, are you still there? Oh, here he comes. It looked like we're he was sleeping. Back. 
Hello? It looked like he was. That was the perfect freeze frame <laughs> picture because it looked like you're in Lyle's response. And Alex was like this. Like, this is putting me to sleep. <laughs> you know, but he's back. Alex, you back from your nap? <laughs> he's can you hear us, now, Alex? Alex, can you hear us? Oh, what happened there? That's okay. Do you hear us, though? And this is yeah, I can hear you now. Just, okay. And this is why Speedy's going. We want Alex to focus. That's what we want. But um, uh, we'll let Alex fix his technical difficulties for a second. Um, really quick. So, Josh, what do you think about it? I'll ask you that. Well, I think to me, it, it's it's a perfect scenario. I think we have discussed this over and over and over again. We've had special guests on this show. We've talked about it when we did take down breakdown. We. Oh, I want to I mean, pause you for a second. I want to pause you. If you look, if you squint, Alex kind of looks like Santino Morello. Yes, he does. Oh my God! Do you have a? <laughs> do, you have a do you have a U.S. Open Championship match tonight? <laughs> do you have a Cobra in your pocket? Oh my goodness! But um, oh, he's gone. No, no, he's coming back. He's coming back. But anyway, going back to what I was saying before, um, Santino. Alex, you there? Yeah, I'm there. I don't know okay. what's going on with my with, uh, the connection in here, but sorry for the technical chip difficulty, everybody. Uh, I have no clue why my Wi-Fi went out during that whole whole discussion, but it, I'm trying to get it back. I will up. say, yeah, there you go. It, it's going to sink back in. There you go. I think you got it. So, um, I was saying, in regards to how, listen, they're going to get the viewership back. The viewership is going to come back because I hope so. Again, there's no counter product unless you want to go on Twitch and watch Impact, which I don't think Impact has that kind of fan base that's really going to really watch both shift at the, same the time. power. Yes, you could. You could do that. You could watch mm-hmm. on your phone or you watch Impact on you your could. phone or your yeah. tablet and yeah. watch the, 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 the fans are going. The fans are going to come back. They're 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 going to come back. NXT is going to – this is better for them. It's better for them in the long run. Listen, yes. listen, they tried. It, it, I understood what they were trying to do. It didn't work. Um, they also – this was a blessing in disguise for the NHL moving their stuff to the USA Network because NXT yes. was now forced to move. Otherwise, they would have continued to, to be on Wednesdays and get slaughtered and in the ratings. One thing people need to realize is that majority of the NXT – and AEW fan base watch each other's product. Yes, but you do. I'll say ninety five percent of the of the fan bases are not don't hate on the other show. Let me ask they you this watch loud. The you, other you, show. You, you, let me ask you this loud. Do you watch both shows? Yeah, I do. When you look at both products, this had to be done for um a, for NXT. It was necessary. It was man. You like I said, you could thank the NHL for really stepping up and basically have it to force NXT out of Wednesdays. Because, again, they would have kept going on Wednesdays. But we think it's a good move. Let's get to Monday Night Raw last night. Um, I know Alex is in here. He'll rejoin us when he's ready. Yeah, it was pretty much a snooze fest. Um, um, I want to go first with this. And I, I, you want to say you why. Don't want at least, you don't want to at least bring up the good moment? No. I, I'm going to say why it was, like, the entire way they booked that, and you're saying it's probably last year winning. The entire way they booked that was terrible. They well, of took, course it was. They took a – their top heel faction in the company. Earlier in the show, they had their tag team wrestling as heels. Then throughout the show, they're slowly making Lashley kind of like a face, not intentionally. And then he wins, and he squashes him, which is very unheel like and you look at the reaction on social media, and everyone's really happy about it. They unintentionally made him a face. So now yeah. you have you have the your top heel faction with a, t- a tag team and a manager that are heels. And then you have your single star in that faction as a face. It's just really weird. I don't know how they're not now going to turn him back into a being a hated heel, 
Because they're gonna I, have him I don't, face, they're gonna have him face McIntyre. At they're gonna have have him face it, facing McIntyre, but if he's liked by the people because he's champion, he they're, has to they're be gonna, they're re- still rebuilt gonna now. Drew. They're still gonna cheer for Drew. You mean the button that they press to make people cheer? Of course they are. Well, no, I mean I'm talking about the one at WrestleMania where there's actually fans in the stands. Yes, yes, I forgot about them. Yeah, I did. How? Um. That's a it's brain been a year. Wow. It's been a year. Well, we were supposed to go last year. We were, and stupid effing COVID. And if we can actually go back, I want to call well, it out. Well, at least um, me know to that for sure. Uh, what's who did we have on our show? Uh, Alicia uh, too. No, no, no. On takedown breakdown, just before WrestleMania last year. Uh, Justin Labar. Oh no, no, no slice. Slice Wrestling. Come yes. On. He said that we we're still going to have WrestleMania. Slice, whoa, if you're whoa, listening, whoa, you whoa, jinxed whoa, it. Whoa, whoa. You Hold jinxed on. it. You said no. we were still going to have WrestleMania. No. And he did. He did. You, ah, but you agreed with him. And I was the one in the room that I, I said. Did. Yes, you did. And, you were the and, only one who said it would be canceled. And I, and I, and I said, this pandemic is going to get so bad, they're not going to have a switch of the cancer. And you got, I remember who else? Justin was there. Yeah, Slice was telling me you were telling you're crazy. WWE would never cancel WrestleMania. It's too big. <laughs> blah 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 blah. And I said okay. And two weeks later, WrestleMania is now in the Performance Center yep. <laughs> with no fans. <laughs> I said this got so. I mean, like you all thought that access was still going to happen. They were just going to put hand sanitizer out for people to wash yeah. their hands. That, that's what that, we were being told to I do back said, then, though. I literally We look said, back what the... I said, you guys are crazy. People go... I said, go look at Europe. Go look at Italy. People were dying yeah. left and right in Italy. You're right. You're and right. you all... Uh, you're still going to have... I said, you're all cra- you're crazy. If you think Hand sanitizer. By the way, it's I think you're right. It. So, like, like, know, like record that moment. <laughs> Write it I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on your calendar. I'm just continuing this one. But, uh, um, yeah, like, I, I, I gotta say, you know, it's gonna be weird. They have to build him up as a monster again. As a monster heel to lose to Drew, which I think is fi- what they're gonna do. They're figuring but it out. It's, They'll I, figure I, it out. I, they're, I don't, they're gonna, they're, you know why he's going to be a so monster? So you're still company? confident in you're still, you're still confident make in that douchey. company? Yeah. No, I'm not confident in the company. I'm not confident in the company. I'm confident in the storyline of how they're going to build him into a heel because they're going to make him come off as a douchebag. I, I hope. I really do hope. Oh, I have no... MVP f- has done a phenomenal a job. Co- faith in a company. Faith in a company. No, I people, lost people faith in a company years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm going to be I'm, like I have a lot of faith in MVP. He's done a phenomenal job. I think he can continue to make him a heel. But I'm just trying to figure out how you make him go from a heel unintentionally to a face, and then you make him a, a monster heel again for WrestleMania. Dude, I'm worried about I'm, of what two months. I'm worried about which is enough time, by the way. That's plenty of time. If they if they screw it up, not. Listen, I will tell you this. Drew versus Bobby, if you go back, watch their matches in the Independence. Yeah, they did a great scene. job at Impact. Great job at Impact. They did an amazing job at Impact. And not even Impact. They did other matches, too, in the Independence scene. And they have great yep. chemistry together. And I, I think what you're doing here is you're giving – this is where I give Vince the credit that he doesn't usually get. But this is what Vince is doing. He's giving two guys – that deserve the moment, their moment at WrestleMania. Yes, and, that's and what he, I he, love he, that they're doing he, he is giving. I, I, he is. He Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre are both getting their moment. Um. Well, we we know of three matches so far for WrestleMania, and which honestly, are good. Was, which are good I, ideas. Yeah, I like the three matches. You have Sasha, uh, Bianca. You oh, have Sasha Bianca Pro- the main event. That, that's that's gonna, gonna be the best match the of the entire WrestleMania. Oh, but yeah, you're gonna it's have gonna be the main event one of the nights. Roman Edge, most likely. Oh, I don't think they. Oh no, they did. Now. They did. They did confirm it. Yeah. Oh, you're on actually. Board with yeah, yeah. Now. Yes, I am. I wasn't at first, but now you. And then you're gonna have uh, okay. Bobby and um, Drew, which they've done good things in the past. If they let them do what they can do, which they did not do to AJ and Shinsuke, let them do what they can, and that match can be great. 
They have so, three matches that can be very memorable. It could be it, a great WrestleMania if they really it, let them wrestle. It really is, and it's two nights. So just remember, it is it, it is two yes, nights this yes. year. So I, I would imagine. Do you think Roman, we do Sasha Oscar now? Because uh, Lacey Evans is hurt. You mean Charlotte? I think we Asuka? do. Char- um, yeah. As long What's as Oscar's. I, I mean, as you said Char- um, Sasha. I did not. Char- yeah, yeah, that's okay. Um, as long as Oscar's healthy enough to do it. After what happened um, to her last week, yeah, as long as she's okay, I, I mean, she got, still do it. I mean, she got she got kicked in the head and lost her tooth by Shayna Baszler. So as long as she's okay and healthy to do it, then I think. Let's see if they Oscar Charlotte had a great first match at WrestleMania. Yeah, they did. Uh, when so, when Charlotte ended her streak, that was a great match. Yeah. Now people I, want I, people want to crap all over Charlotte, but Charlotte delivers. She does. She's one of the she, best women she, in wrestlers in the world. You can uh, hate on her all you want. There's the reason why the, she gets all these championship wins. She's I, I think very I think good. she's I, I think she's the best women's wrestler in the world. I think she's I like, agree she with you. Is. And people want to like It's because of the name of and fans. all the wins that she gets. Yes. Yes. But people pe- people want to um also attack uh Tessa Blanchard for what she has done in the past. But she has never actually been able to compete against the female talent in WWE. And the likes of Charlotte, but more stories She's are coming out about her. Again She's up there. Now. Yeah, but more stories yeah, are coming heard. out about her now. I have heard. And I, 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 I think listen, I think she's going to go to stardom. Listen, I think she's hey, go to listen. Stardom. Hey, hey, you remember me? I I have a Tessa Blanchard shirt. You remember me? I'm as big a Tessa Blanchard fan as there is. Hey, um, I used to be a big now, Marty fan. I don't wear his shirt anymore. You know, I, I will not wear his shirt. And, and 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 now the things have come out. It's going to be tough, but. Yeah, you know, I mean, I look at the. I I like Romania's going this year. I, I, think I, I actually agree. Doing, I agree. I I think what they're what they're, you know, you talk about building superstars, and they, building they, they are talent. doing that right now. Yeah, and they listen. Say what you want about Edge winning the Royal Rumble match. He's gonna put over Roman. He's gonna put over Roman, and yeah. even if Roman does put over Edge. Um, which could happen, it's fine because what it does is it leads to a storyline and Edge gets the moment that he rightfully deserves because, let's face it, the injury that he came back from, nobody thought he was going to come back. But they, they – and you remember, we asked Raj this, Raj Jerry this three weeks ago. Raj said exactly what I said in my article about Edge, saying that he didn't know if it was the right decision – but he agreed with why it had to be done because you're trying to deliver WrestleMania in a non, um, in yeah, a non, in, in a non, well, I said it before he even said it and you screamed at me, you know? Well, okay. Uh, at first I was very much against it in the long run. When I really think about it, it's not as bad as I made it out to be. It's not, it's not as bad. Here's as the thing. You gotta, here's the thing, dude, you're in a non-travel city of Tampa in yeah. a pandemic era where you have to sell tickets. You don't have Undertaker. You don't have John Cena. You're doing it in a non, you know what I mean? In a non-popular uh, city, not New York, not New well, Orleans, not, not LA. LA. And you're trying to sell tickets in a pandemic era where fans are still feeling unsettled and unsafe, where you have to put a draft. You don't have John Cena. You don't have The Rock. You don't have The Undertaker. Nope. Who are you, who, who? How else are you going to bring fans, the older fans, into the seats at the, at Mania? The casuals. Yeah, How you're gonna you? you're gonna have to do you something. Need really hall, you need a hall. You need a hall of famer. You need a hall of famer. We're talking about Edge. We're talking about Edge. Yeah. We're talking about Edge. Yeah. We're talking about Edge. So yeah. you need to have that fan base. You do. Where you can bring the casual fan in there, and if listen, they're saving Rock Roman for L.A. I don't care when they're doing it for LA at 39. I don't care. That's the right decision. We're going to go for that. It's not going to be in Dallas next year. It's not in Tampa this year. They're doing it in LA at SoFi Stadium. That's where it should be done. I don't care. Don't jump the gun early. Don't do it in Dallas. You do it in LA. That should be the facts of how it should go down. Okay. John Cena has said he can't do Mania this year because of his schedule, because of COVID. He's under contract with movies. He really doesn't feel safe doing it this year. Undertaker is retired. They had a freaking special about him already. And if they if he does come back, it was a waste of a damn great special. Okay? Would Hulk you be Hogan shocked can't do company? it. 
Oh, Kobe can't do it. Okay? Remember what Mark Henry did? No. Oh, Kobe can't do it. Shawn Michaels can't do it. Triple H just said he's completely done. Triple H just said, I'm done. I have to focus on NXT yeah. right now. I have Wait, to we saw on his NXT. last match? We saw Triple his H? last match live. Yeah, we did. We saw his last match in front of fans. WrestleMania 35. <laughs> yes, we did. That was his last match. Yes, and we saw Batista's last match. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I did. don't know if he wrestled after that, Triple H. I don't know if he did. I don't I think he did. Up. We saw... Get this. This is going to blow Alex's mind. Lyle and I, we were at the Undertaker's last ever victory when he had the undefeated streak. Yes, we were. Think about it for a second. Did you even think about that? Did you even nuts. think about that? Which, by the way, as Lyle was screaming for the Undertaker during that match, I was just, like the only loser screaming for CM Punk in that section. As yeah. I was for, as I was for Fandango, I went. When, when I went. I never, when, never when, 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 Fan, when Fandango when Fandango beat Chris Jericho. Oh no, that match didn't happen. What match did you want? It didn't happen. It was a Fandango oh, match next year. Oh man, I love Damian Sandow. Oh man, that was that the match, match you wanted. That was bullshit. <laughs> let me tell you. Let me tell you something. The whole. Stadium was cheering for Jericho. I had to have been one of the only few hundred people rooting for Fandango. And when he won, I went crazy. They dropped the ball so hard on him. He was so over. Remember, remember the train ride home? Oh, that was great. That was great. Oh man, Alex, you had to be there, man. It was good shit, dude. Don't mind my cursing, but it, it was so good. <laughs> no, it was so good. I mean, but, but okay. I so, do we want to go to our segment now? Yes, yes, yes. That, so let's go okay. to our Alex. Let Alex go first, because I I feel bad. Alex got cut off with the with the. Yeah. Uh, okay, I mean, so I'm gonna explain the rules. Uh, hey. Everyone knows the game. Uh, F marry kill. Now F is a uh, I'm 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 abbreviating for for another word. Um, this is kind of a different. Really, game don't say. We'll twist on it. <laughs> um, this is gonna be called a uh, push fire job. Now I'm gonna pull Nate out of this hat. And you're going to say if you would push them, fire them, or job them. Okay. You're not going to do one for each three. You don't have to. You're just going to pick one of those three for whoever we grab. Hold on. So before, we start, if, before we start with that, it's like Spectrum just took a major crap on my life. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> uh, it's all good now. You're, now you're whatever, here for this, and we can hey, have them laugh while we... Uh, Whatever you do, do not use Spectrum. Like it's they're, they're oh no no we're worse. We have uh oh, we have cable vision up here. We're worse. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> Optum, I mean, you have to remember Optimum crapped on my Wi-Fi a few uh, last week. <laughs> so you know, now next week's Lyle's turn. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go now. Okay. Okay. Go. Push fire or job for Bo Dallas. Oh man! Oh man! Job. Why? I'm gonna say fire. What the hell <laughs> does he do with his company? He was great Nothing. in NXT. He was. But then they brought him up with say, "Here you go, here's a gimmick. You're gonna straight out." Uh, oh fail come at. on! The belief thing was so over. Are you kidding me? That was so <laughs> over. It was funny as shit. Are you kidding me? He's running okay, on the ring target. like he wants something. <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> the funniest part was when I he said, told. I, I, I'm sorry. I, by the way, I had to. I, I should not be cursed. That's my fault. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm, part, I'm exhausted. Now my now my dog's part. running around. I think I might fire my dog soon in like five minutes. <laughs> I might fire her next. You know. The funniest thing um, to me was uh, Bo okay. Dallas. So you have to pick. So you picked job. I said fire. What What are you gonna do? Oh. <laughs> oh. I'll go with fire. I'm not going to make him succumb to jobbing. He's too okay. talented to be a jobber. <laughs> <laughs> Alex loves my answers. It's great. Okay, the next one. Ricochet. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? It's push to the moon. Push. It should easily yeah, be push. Pushing. I'm honestly, I'm at the As po- far as possible. Hold on. I'm almost at the point of fire. Fire. So he could go somewhere else and be better. Go to New Japan. Yes. Yes, especially with Haromo. Okay, especially, especially with Haromo being out. Especially, especially with Haromo being out now. Yeah. Wait. 
I'll Hold on, really quick. I know we were doing something. Did, did, did we like the idea of El Desperado winning the uh, IWGP? Uh, I like that, belt? actually. I like El Desperado. Did you like it, Alex? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I thought it was like good. It? I that was a good idea. Yeah. I just wanted your thoughts on that. I thought it was interesting. They gave him a okay. shot. Good. Okay, go. The next one is Jungle Boy. Oh, that's push. definitely a push. That's definitely push, a push, push, dude. TNT yeah. title. Put him in a TNT pile yep. picture. That's, 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 uh, he has shown... Time and time again, how great! Forget Tatsu, how great of a singles competitor he is. And now they gave him a new theme song. And, and, uh, oh, uh, I, I love the theme. song. I cannot. Song. Wait. Yeah, that was his GTW theme song. Oh, I love the theme song. No, like my God. God. The crowds are back and people start chanting along to that. It's going to be great. <laughs> They're doing it now. It's great. Oh my God! Yeah. Holy crap! Good catch. Okay, Alex. that was good stuff. This is the last one. Marco stunt. Ugh, job. Job him. Fire. Are you, me? <laughs> you hate him, huh? You hate, hate him. him. <laughs> Dude, he's so I annoying. really don't like him. Actually, no. A- no. No, 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 no. He's going to... I'm going to create a new category. <laughs> why, let, why not let him job? <laughs> let, let him... Let him hero stuff. <laughs> no, no. Let him be eaten by an hour rose. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you could say that, but now, dude, Nyla Rose eats big steaks bigger than Marco Stunt, so it doesn't even fill her appetite. We all do. <laughs> I think Alex saw her at Publix the other day. She bought out the whole store. Alex got to go home early. <laughs> 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 All right, so what was the uh, the next thing we were going to do? Like the trivia thing we're doing? Oh uh, yeah, uh, I I have three questions we can do. Okay, let's okay. go. Shoot, and then we'll do our finisher after. Yes. Now, who was the first IWGP Heavyweight Champion? Oh my God! What the hell what kind of question is that? That. Okay. Can we go? I'm tr- I know. I, I... I'm thinking. I thought Alex was frozen again. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I didn't <see> him. <laughs> I, he just didn't move. <laughs> I thought Spectrum crashed. I thought Spectrum took a really big... I was about, about to say, Spectrum came in the clutch again. Oh, my God. That's the time to talk to your father about that, Alex. <laughs> yeah, um, Paul, get a better... Get a better... Uh, get a better company instead of shitty Spectrum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Alex. Yeah, maybe maybe Lyle should ask Charlie who the Nationals are going to get as a left-handed bat. Maybe they should freaking figure out. Who they're it was a wife. right-handed bat. Whatever. Maybe they should figure out who they're going to get for their Wi-Fi in their house. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Did Alex just curse? Yes, he did. He never does either. Ooh. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> okay, uh, so take a guess at the first ever IWGP Heavyweight Champion. Oh God, I know. Oh no, it's not him. No. Uh, you're not even going to get me on it. No. It's Anoki. It's Anoki? Really? Anoki. Okay, my next question, because I want to have time for the uh, finisher. Name the three four horsemen that are currently in AEW. The four, uh, four horsemen. Totally okay, Blanchard. Totally Blanchard, Arn Anderson. Arn Anderson, yep. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sting? Yep, that's it. No, you said there were four. There's three. Oh, there's three? There's three, four horsemen that are currently Sting was in it. Sting was in it for, for one, one year. No, was I it think it was a year. month. It was one year. It was one, and, I think it was and, one and year. Rick, Rick Flair turned on him. Mm-hmm. It was the match. I remember the match. Arn Anderson and Brian Pillman versus Sting and Rick Flair. <clears throat> That's it. Because we're running out of time. We have to do our All right. Picture. So, guys, what a great first show. Let's end it with our finisher. Lyle, go first. I am going to go, and I think is is the most disgusting thing to come out in a while. It came out today. There was a charity event. It was uh, going to be for women, and AEW is going to be sending out uh, wrestlers to go to the event. I want to applaud Tony Khan for pulling all of this talent, but what came oh, out was that Joey yeah. Ryan was on the show. But that's not the only thing that came out. Joey Ryan was booking the show. He was mm-hmm. promoting the show. Behind yeah. the scenes, hiding it from everybody. That is disgusting. After all the shit he did, yeah, Joey Ryan is going to try and book a charity event 
for women. And then Tony Khan even questioned it. Was it actually a real charity? Was it for a real charity event? We have every right to know. People probably bought tickets to this. Was he just trying to scam everybody? Because I think he would have. I think that's exactly what he was doing. It was, it's disgusting as it. shit. Yeah, I, I read that today too. I saw that. And I do applaud, like you said, I applaud Tony Khan for stepping in and yep. knowing what's the best decision for. It. He's saving him and his brand. It's his brand too. Yeah, a hundred percent. You mm-hmm. know, and that's the right answer. Alex, yours, man. What's going on with you? My finishing move is we got the New Japan Cup was announced. The bracket for 2021, and I'm very, very interested to see how this how this turns out, how it starts, and how it ends. And the one person I think that's going to get very far in this tournament, I'm saying Okada. And I talked to Lyle about this earlier. I think uh, I think Okada is going to win the tournament. Then he's going to go on to face Kota Ibushi. Then he's going to win the titles, and then he's going to try to unify them. Alex, 10 years ago, if WWE did a big tournament and John Cena was in it, and someone guessed John Cena to go far, what would you say? That's absurd. No, I wouldn't say that's absurd. <laughs> I would say no shit. <laughs> Here is- that's the same like like that's the same thing with Okada. He's gonna go towards the end. He's gonna be in the final four. Th- that it's gonna happen. Yeah. Um. So here's mine. I have, I have uh, two. One is I want to thank Alicia, uh, too, for joining us tonight. She was phenomenal. So thank yeah, you. It feels, like so, it feels like so long ago she was on our show. That's how long the show's been. It <laughs> well, really, that was last week. <laughs> it was like eons ago. Um. <laughs> my my other thing is this. I have a. I love New Japan. Um, I have a big problem with what they did this past week. And that's combining we? that is combining both the championships together. They took the most prestigious title in all of professional wrestling and eventually got rid of it. Yes. And I think it's a disaster. Kota Bushi, his favorite guy growing up who we looked up to was Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke Nakamura was one of the greatest IC champions of all time in that with holding that belt. Yep. I think it's an absolute disgrace that they did this. I think it's lazy. Um, it makes no sense because essentially now what you're doing is – here's the thing. New Japan has such a stacked roster. That belt was more significant for guys that are on the mid cards like Ishii, Goto, those guys that you could kind of – they're not big, ginormous superstars, but they're stars enough where they could compete for that belt. Now you take this, now, Ishii now, deserves, now, now, Ishii now, deserves now, a run. But now you Ishii taken deserves that, a run. No, I know, but now you've taken that opportunity away because now you have such a stacked roster. How are those guys ever going to get an opportunity for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship? How? Ishii deserves a run at that world title. Of course he does, but he's not going to get it now. Now he's I not going to get it. Maybe he'll win uh, well, um, the New Japan Cup. Goto, Goto has won the New Japan Cup a couple times. Okay, so It's not happening. Not happening. These guys, th- th- that that was a belt. That was a belt where guys like that, yeah, can they don't have the prestigious names like the Okadas, the Whites, the Abushis, the Naitos. They don't have that name. Well, now here's so the question: Those guys have now, to scratch say that, say that they now take guys from like AEW to come in, like because now they have the partnership. That's so even say, more Omega, of a problem. Say Omega comes in and wins the uh, IWGP Championship, the new one. What happens now? He's gonna probably go back to AEW, yep. or back to the United States with that belt. Uh-huh. Now they have no championship. Who made this call anyway? I really hope it wasn't Gato. I I, I don't think it was. He's too smart. I really ho- I, I I think it could have been uh the new president that, that came in. I that's my gut. I don't think it was Gato. Terrible. He, he's horrible move. Horrible and they are getting criticized move. like crazy about this. And they should this be is not smart at all. It's terrible. It's terrible booking. It's terrible business work. It's terrible. But that's my finishing move. Ladies and gentlemen, before we go, we're just going to remind you one more time how to download us with the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. And that's easy. Wait, that's I forgot. Great. Can you tell me? I'm gonna, I, was, I was in the process of doing that yes! right now. Thank you. Like a customer, it's like a customer at Publix, huh, Alex? You know, it's like one of those crazy guys with the with the. I want my stuff in paper, not plastic. You know, uh, here's how you download the app. It's very simple. If you have an iPhone, you go to the Apple Store. You type in WWSRN. Okay. Android. You go to the Google Play Store. Worldwide Sports. All right. You can check out our show schedule. All of our That's articles. Not easy. 
all of our content. It's so easy. A Lyle can do it. Uh, yeah, exactly. Our, <laughs> I have it downloaded on my schedules. phone. Our show schedules, our, our articles, all of our content. If you missed the show, you can re-listen and re-watch the show. You can watch clips of the show. All of that really? stuff is on there for free. Check us out. Also I'm going to listen right sports. afterwards. Check us out. Okay. Check us out on WorldWideSportsRadio.com. <laughs> All right, as well, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Periscope. We are all over the place. And, again, our ticker, um, there we are right there, our Twitter information. I want to thank Alicia, too, for coming on again with us tonight, for sure. Alex, this is your last night as the producer of Off the Mat. You are handing the reins over to Speedy Petey. You must be fired. Yeah, fired! <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I will say this. Alex is probably the happiest guy on the planet that this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> Alex has probably had enough of this crap. <laughs> Alex, am I wrong? No. And then yeah, on top of that... And then on, He's gonna- on- and then on top of that, Spectrum cutting me off. Like, why did you? What, what the heck, Spectrum? Why you do that to me? Yes, why yes, you do that to me. Yeah, what the hell, man? All right, uh, for Lyle Gillen, <laughs> for Alex Slows, I'm Josh Silberg. Thank you so much to the fans for tuning in and letting us your ears for these last two hours. We really appreciate it. Check us out again next Tuesday at eight o'clock on Off the Mat. Also, you can check myself out with Arrow Marks. On Saturday nights on the Weekend Crunch on LIFM News Radio 103.9. We are on after every home Islander game. Actually, so no. Errol every... said that your house on Saturday, that after every Islander game, you're after it. It's, no, it's every home Islander game. <laughs> it's his show. I could care less what he said. Well, you know what? We're on after every <laughs> Islander game. So, you know what? If you want to try it, go for it. We're on after every Islander game. So, screw it. That's when we're on. Every Islander game we're on. Okay. <laughs> All right. But you can check us out every Saturday. If the Islanders aren't playing, we are on at 7 o'clock. Don't forget to check us out next Tuesday at 8 p.m. Right here on Off the Mat. Guys, phenomenal first show. Prime time, two hours. This went extremely well. It was awesome. We had so much fun. To the fans out there, thank you so much. We'll be able to take your calls starting next week as well. So don't forget, we're going to hand out, we're going to give you the number and all the information on Twitter, Facebook, everything. For Alex Lowe's, Lyle Gillen. I'm Josh Soberg. This is Off the Man on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Take care, everybody. Have a good night. We bid you adieu.